بس انا وقفت بس في العنايه شهر كامل بس قاس عليه وصي الناس نوموا يطلعوا الناس نوموا يطلعوا هي بوي دخل لكينا ناصيح عليها بوي دخل لكينا ناصيح عليها حتى الدكتور ما امرنا يوم يجي الدكتور ازخه اصيح اقول له شو قاد ما في امل The story of healthcare in the United Arab Emirates began many decades ago in the sun-scorched desert. In 1960, Sheikh Sayed established the first healthcare facility run by two American missionary doctors. Before this facility, the Bedouin people relied on the cures and remedies of their traditional healers and they would walk days in hostile terrain to find them in the hajar mountains om zaid searches the ground for rare medicinal herbs that sprout in the unpredictable scatterings of rain she believes that god has provided a remedy for every illness and it is her duty as a traditional healer to search for these cures الاعشاب يكون اللي نعالج بها قبل كنا يعني نجيبها من من الاماكن اللي موجوده حوالينا الحمد لله كل شيء موجود والامطار ما تنقطع الامطار يا ولدي ما تنقطع الحمد لله خير موجود يطلع معنا كل شيء في في الامطار يعني كل شيء ما يود The ancient knowledge of healing was passed down from Um Said's mother and her mother's mother before that. But these enduring skills weave back in history to the medieval era, when the first Arab physicians lay the foundations of modern medicine. من أبغيت الصدق والد والد أنا أروح أسألهم يعني شو عالجته هي ماله ليش مريض هذا الإنسان وش هي من المرض. of change blow through the emirates carrying the promise of better health they sweep a nation and move them towards the new frontiers of medicine في احنا نسموه الحمد لله الحين دكاتره الحمد لله الله بسوي وسيله وبيها ان شاء الله وسيله خير الحمد لله رب العالمين انه الحمد لله هذه نعمه وسيله والله انها يا ابني نعمه علينا واعيان واكلنا سلم واللي بعيد وقريب يعني هذا العلاج يعني مثل عقود الدخاتر But 
But now the quest to be cured and healed promises to be closer to home. For Adhari Abdullah, a 19-year-old heart patient, the Cleveland Clinic is nothing less than a beacon of hope in her long history of cardiac trouble. She meets her future heart doctor, Dr. Ravi Nair, an invasive cardiologist who has worked for many years on the most complex cardiac problems. So these are the various lights that we have. You've had treatment here and you've been to England and the United States for treatment, correct? And obviously you're doing quite well, you're in school now. For most of her short life, Adari's existence has been less about living and more about waiting. Adari, a media student in Alain, dreams of working as a journalist. But her hopes for a normal existence have always been shadowed by the threat of congenital heart disease, a condition that could cut her life short without warning. <laughs> After the first operation, Adari's mother had to face the creeping deterioration of her eight-year-old daughter's condition. Adari's heart appeared to be failing again, and she required another operation in London. But this time, with catastrophic consequences. Adari had little chance of being brought back to consciousness. But a miracle happened, and she emerged from the comatose state. Athari returned to her home in Alain to face the challenges of a long recovery and an ever-weakening heart. Her doctors knew that without the proper medical care, she would not survive. They recommended the best heart doctors in the world. They flew the critically sick little girl, accompanied by her sister, to the United States of America, to Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. I first 
بس وقت ابنان كان عمري عشر سنوات فالمستشفى وايد تغير يعني من قبل طبعا صار أحلى وشي يعني وأكبر من قبل المنطقة يعني حتى المنطقة اللي فيها المستشفى يعني طبيعة وشي يعني تفتح النفس إن الناس يتعالجوا فيها وطبعا كان هناك الشتاء وكان يعني تدخل المستشفى تحس إن داخل أنت البيت يعني دافي وشي يعني تحس شعور ثاني يعني يعني كان يعني رعايتهم أسلوبهم شي يعني يحبب يعني المرضى في المستشفى شي. Athari's treatment in the Heart and Vascular Institute in Cleveland Clinic began at the age of 10. The cardiac department stands as a testament to a proud heritage of achievement. It is the very heart of innovation. In 1958, Dr. Mason Soane's revolutionized cardiology, marking the birth of modern cardiac imaging. Following in his footsteps, Dr. René Favoloro pioneered the first coronary artery bypass. A stream of innovations and success has ensured the Cleveland Clinic's number one ranking for cardiac care in the USA for 20 years in a row. Toby Cosgrove, a pioneer and innovator in the field of cardiac and thoracic surgery, has devoted his entire life to expand and lead Cleveland Clinic into the future. I came to the Cleveland Clinic um, as a heart surgeon. I was fortunate because I came in and followed on the footsteps of these giants. And it has been a, a great trip, but it was all done on a basis of people who have built this organization. The story of Cleveland Clinic is a story of medical innovation. It is also a story of friendship, trust, and collaboration. It all began over a hundred years ago in Cleveland, when Dr. George Kreil, a determined and enthusiastic surgeon, joined a small medical practice. Here, he began to work with two other passionate physicians. An enduring partnership soon flourished. When World War I broke out, the three partners set sail to the killing fields and trenches in France to join the lakeside unit. Over 20 million soldiers were wounded in the bloodiest war ever fought. In order to save these soldiers, the three colleagues had to work not as individuals, but as a unit together. Shot. Superior medical efficiency and cooperation now determined who would live and who would die. They learned that they could do better working together than they could do independently. So they came back to Cleveland with the idea of forming a hospital where everybody worked together, and that was the foundation for the Cleveland Clinic. On their return, the partners invited another military veteran, John Phillips, to join their partnership. In October 1919, the partners pooled their financial resources to lease property and construct a new outpatient building. The clinic grew, flourished, and expanded. But on May 15, 1929, Volatile nitrate films ignited, discharging a cloud of poison gas that blew through the building.
The new Cleveland Clinic was almost ruined in the flames of the tragic fire, followed by the Great Depression and World War II. But 10 years later, the institution rose again to take its place as a leader in quality and innovation. In the 1950s, Dr. Willem Kolff, the inventor of the kidney dialysis machine, improved his device at Cleveland. His team's pioneering programs gained prominence. About 12 years ago, the, the clinic was contacted by the, uh, the United Arab Emirates that uh, Sheikh Zayed had developed kidney failure. And could the Cleveland Clinic help in, in taking care of Sheikh Zayed? Dr. Robert Heike has specialized in chronic and acute kidney failure. He immediately flew to Abu Dhabi to take care of Sheikh Zayed's serious kidney problems. Sheikh Zayed was advised to fly to Cleveland, Ohio to receive therapy to restore his health. He agreed to come over to Cleveland and was at the Cleveland Clinic for several months getting additional therapies that improved his kidney function. So it was, it was a very life-changing experience in this way. The institution has changed the very face of medicine. On the surface, Connie Culp appears to live an ordinary life with her friend Jeff. A few years ago, she was called a monster and so disfigured that she could not go out in public. Connie became the recipient of another woman's face in a trailblazing operation. She became the face of courage. I was the first person in the United States to have the face transplant. The operation was 22 hours, I believe. I'm amazed not just at the feat of, of creating a new face for Connie, but I'm really amazed at her personality. You know, despite of what happened to her, she forgives her husband. In September 2004, Thomas Culp returned home in a fit of jealousy. He was to shoot his wife, Connie, and then turn the gun on himself. My husband back then come in with a gun, and he landed it in the kitchen. I tried to take off running, and that's why I got this side of the face. Connie's devastating injury began a painful journey that eventually took her to Cleveland Clinic, where she would build a lifelong relationship with Dr. Frank Pepe. Is it tender at all? Yeah. Just this one spot. That one spot? Does it itch? In 2008, Dr. Pepe was part of the team that performed Connie's face transplant. It was the most complex operation ever performed in the USA. So this is Connie, what she looked like before. Actually a very, very beautiful girl. And this is what Connie looked like uh, after she was uh, reconstructed 12 times. And again, you can see totally the, all the bones of the face were shattered. And then after 23 reconstructed procedures, this is the best the doctors could do. And she became basically a horror to other individuals, especially little children. She became isolated from society. On December 2008, a woman with similar skin and structure to Connie had a massive heart attack, and the team of physicians knew they had a donor. And then I got the phone call and they said, get ready, get your butt out here as soon as you can. It was like two or three in the morning. I got a call about midnight, a little bit after midnight, and, and all I heard on the other line, it's Frank, it's, it's, it's Maria, I think we have a, a donor. And I said, great. And I said, let's get the, everybody together. We'll meet everybody at the hospital. 
In the next 22 hours, 80% of Connie's face was to be replaced and rebuilt in the most complicated operation ever performed. The worrisome part is, is when we brought the face and it was cold white, it was as white as, you know, you can imagine a white shirt. And then the microvascular surgeons came in and they attached it uh, into the areas of the facial vein and the uh, jugular, external jugular vein. So when we released the clamps after we put them together, actually after the team put them together, the face, which was pale white, almost like a cadaveric white, turned bright red. And there was a quiet in the room right afterwards. And you heard this collective sigh, like, you know. It went very, very smoothly because we had practices for at least four months exactly what we were going to do. There was no question about what we were going to do. Connie shifted the paradigm of defeat, and she taught us that to live is to forgive. You always think of the best times, the good times that you had, not the bad times. The good times will come back around. The bad times we can wash away. Medicine and science now stretch beyond time, space, and boundaries to the new frontiers of brain science. The Cleveland Clinic Lou Rovo Brain Center for Brain Health is now responding to the urgent need for therapies to treat the diseases that affect our brains as we age. Larry Ruvo founded the futuristic building and project in memory of his father. This building stands here because I wanted my family and friends to never go through what I went through with my mom and dad and I with my father. Suffering is always hard to quantify. But for families facing this cruel disease, the pain and heartbreak is intense. Nothing can prepare the victims and families for the ravages of Alzheimer's, as it destroys the mind and steals memories. Larry Ruvo watched the disease consume his father, and he was powerless to help him. I wanted my family and friends to know how important it is to get an early diagnosis, to get proper diagnosis, and to make sure the caretaker, the caregiver, is recognized. He established the Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health. His mission was to transform his own memory of the past into the hope for the future. Chose a well-known architect, Frank Geary, to package the concept. That will tell the world that I'm serious. Because without that, every 73 seconds, somebody is diagnosed with the disease in the world. Now look right at my nose and tell me whether I wiggle, point at whichever finger I wiggle. Now what is this? A donkey. Dr. Jeffrey a Cummings, a leader a in the field of Alzheimer's, is discovering new techniques into how and why brain diseases begin and how they worsen. It's his mission to find a way to prevent the onset of these devastating disorders. So the great questions about the life of the mind and uh, our self as a memory, these are all things that are mediated by the brain and they fascinated me and so I wanted to spend my life thinking about these problems and helping people whose brains were afflicted such that they couldn't 
remember. They couldn't remember who they were. They didn't know the self because the self is a construction of memory. It is said that nothing is ever lost if we remember it. And for Dr. Lashwani, this long summer day will be remembered as his last day in Cleveland, Ohio. Deep inside, he knows that the real journey of exploration consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. You know, I've always thought about life as a gift that you have to make the most of. And it's really a privilege to have been born, to be able to pursue what, what excites you. And that has kind of been my guiding principle throughout, is to live life so that you can make a difference. Dr. Lashwani is a leading expert in epileptic seizures and seizure disorders. So can we see the seizure right now? Maybe it is recorded here. A very nice exam. You've looked at his heart, his lungs, his neural checks, and everything checks out pretty good, huh? Yes. Does he have any symptoms of uh, stomach pain or anything that might suggest liver involvement? He, has a, he had a tumor removed, an astrocytoma. I believe it was on the left side. On the left side. Casey, good afternoon, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm Dr. Lachwani, Casey, and I'm one of the epilepsy doctors here. And I just wanted to stop by... Casey has been experiencing intense seizures. Dr. Lashwani needs to make an accurate diagnosis of the epilepsy. I've had seizures like that before, but not to that extreme, I should say. So the first step is an accurate diagnosis of the epilepsy, the cause, what's causing it, and the type of seizures that are going on. And that requires a certain battery of tests which involve a whole team. 80% of the right frontocentral and about 15 to 20... Casey will require another operation to remove the tumor they believe is triggering the seizures. He's somewhat uh, subdued and encephalopathic because of the medications that he takes, but otherwise he's very engaged. Wouldn't it be nice if I could take this form of medicine and the care of patients with patients first to a place that doesn't have it. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do that by extending resources rather than duplicating resources? So I'm sitting at Cleveland Clinic thinking these thoughts a few years ago, and out of the blue, it landed in my lap. Would you consider going to Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi? My motto in life, my mantra in life is to really be the captain of the life ship with all of its different shades and not just be one or the other or something else. To dream, to discover, and to explore has always been part of Dr. Lashwani's personal philosophy. He joins the Cleveland Clinic team in Abu Dhabi, preparing their departments for the opening of the hospital. So we will bring the high quality healthcare and practice, but we'll also bring the expectation of excellence with the idea of transferring the entire culture of the Cleveland Clinic. It's dedication to excellence, it's dedication to the patient, um, to our facility in Abu Dhabi. Soon, a new hospital in the region will be delivering on its promises. For a nation, 
it will be a beacon of hope and healing. For the thousands of physicians and caregivers, it will be a place to explore and to discover. And they will see a view that will stretch far beyond the borders of their minds because they now stand on the shoulders of giants. هاي نعمة ولا حد يقول الله يذكرهم بالخير ويرحم روح زايد الروحه